to worship the team. Thanks for testimonies. Thanks for coming. Uh, today I'd like to uh, share one of the uh, famous parables of Jesus. It's called the parable of the sower. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. This is the story. This is the teaching. Of the about the the key to succeed our life. And you read chapter 13 from verse 1. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it. While all the people stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You'll be even. Uh, you will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. So this people's heart has become calloused, 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 calloused. Sorry, calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their eyes understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. But blessed you but blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth. Many prophets and righteous men longed to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but they did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatched away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the 
thorn is the man who hears the word, but the worries of his life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, make it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He perceives the crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Let me pray. Our Heavenly Father, give us ear to listen to your word. Amen. Uh, I still remember that when I uh, went to Southern California to study the Bible, uh, this parable was the first one I choose to write the report. <laughs> and I, I do not remember what I wrote on the paper, but uh, uh, the reason why I went to the United States to study the Bible was to study the parables. The parables of Jesus is my favorite in my lifetime uh, study lifetime uh, treasure, my lifetime uh, gold or silver or pearl or jewelry or everything, you know. Well, and uh, most of you know the parable very well, and uh, I do not tell some weird stuff, but I want to share the basic idea of this parable. And somebody who did not know this parable, he, uh, read the parable for the first time in your life. You're so lucky today. Because this is the story of the stories. This is the parable of the parable. Amen. I love it so much. And some parables do not have the explanation, but this one has. Jesus, who, taught, who uh, told this parable, and also he uh, explained the meaning of the parable. Maybe because this parable is so important to understand. In, in Israel, maybe in the first time, or maybe in the BC area, or not, maybe uh, I don't know by when, but for a long time, this is the style of their farming their agriculture. A farmer bring out the seed and just scattering. That's all. They go to the mountain or some wide area, just go and scattering the seed. Doesn't make sense to me, even for, Jap for, for Japanese. You know, we Japanese make the field first, right? Plow, uh, uh, plow the uh, field and make it so nice. Then put the seed. But in Israel, in the first century, the time of Jesus, they didn't do that. They just bring the seed and scatter it and just watch. <laughs> yeah, that is the background of the story. It doesn't make sense to us, right? Yeah. Why they did not plow the field? I don't know. So that's why 
the sun seed and not grow. They just uh, pick by the birth. The sun seeds they grow, they grew, but the soil was thin. They, they they were on the rocky place. So they came up quickly, sprung up quickly, because the soil was shallow. So they did not have enough place to put the root. So they just sprung up. They came up. But the soil was shallow. The problem of the, the agriculture of Israel is rain. They do not have rain uh, regularly. They have rain just twice a year. Yeah, about a month. So they gather the seed right after the rain. Yeah. That's the way to uh, to uh, feed, gather the seed. After uh, rain comes, so the water come, goes into the soil, and after that, the farmer goes out and looks for some someplace good and scatter it. They don't check the ground. Some ground are rocky. Looks good, but the rock is underneath the ground. So the Many looks good, you know, because it comes quick quickly, so grow quickly. Oh, I maybe we'll have a lot of fruit uh, or a crop today this se this season. But the soil is shallow. So after rain in Israel, just sunshine like that for three or four months. Rain one month, three or four months sunshine. So it happens if the soil was shallow. Dried up and dead. It happens in Israel. Other so other seeds on a good soil. Good soil. And they grew up. But the soil was good. So other uh, plants grow together, like thorn, like a bad uh, plant grew together because soil is good. So they did not know what other seeds on, uh, were on the ground. So the wheat comes up and thorn comes up. And the thorn choke the plant because thorns grow faster, grow faster than wheat, and finally, still other seed fell on good soil, good deep soil, no bad plants. They grew, grew, grew. The heart of the, the farmers didn't do anything. They just scattered the seed and just watch. I want to be a farmer in Israel. In Japan, the farmer to grow to grow the uh, the uh, rice field. We call they. Uh, Use 88 ways to care, 88 cares to grow the rice, right? That's why the rice kanji is right here. 88. Hachijuhachi. You know that? Uh huh. That's why rice is like this. 88. Ah, 
That's a Japanese farmer do. Not the Israel farmer. They just go out of the field and watch. Some are gone, some are dead, some are choked, and some are good. What this parable tells us? Tell you. Soil is our heart. Seed is the word of God, word of the kingdom God. Farmer, me, God. God comes our field and scatter the word of God. And he's watching. That's all. Huh? He does not touch your heart. He does not touch your heart. He just throw the seed of God into your heart. Some are gone because the evil one comes. Who's the evil one? Who's the evil one? comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart, in our heart. We have many Word of God. We read the Word of God and hear the Word of God. But the evil one comes to your heart, comes to our heart, and takes the Word of God out. Some word, some word of God comes in our heart and wow, what I feel, wow, it's good, good word, you know, it's a wonderful word of God. I love it. And read, remember, but it's gone. Doesn't last long. We feel good, you know, we feel wonderful. It feels us great. That's why I, we love the Word of God. But that's all. The Word of God sometimes feels us good, but it does not last long. And some words of God comes in our heart, grew, and the, t the t and when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. Troubles and persecution comes because of the word, quickly falls away. Once we accept the word and feels good, feels so happy, but some persecution, the troubles, some hard time to hold the hold on to the word of God. Just gone. It's dead. And some word of God we have in the heart. A good word, a good place of heart. So the root goes down and came up and grew, and grew, and grew, but some bad plants are in our hearts, too. They are, like, they are the worries of this life. Worries of this life. This morning I preached about the worriedness from Matthew chapter 6. Jesus says, don't worry. Jesus did not say, don't worry, be happy. He said, don't worry, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Not don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and his righteousness. Then God will give you what you need. That's the uh, rule of the kingdom of God. 
In our heart, we, we have full of the worriness, worries of our life, and also the deceitfulness of wealth, the wealthy word, tempt us. Try to take our word of God out and try to push our our um, wheat are growing but try to take them out. So we have to check we have to be careful about the wariness and wealth. Two W words. Choke it, make it unfruitful. Only one soil. Only one soil could have good, good, good result. The ground is good. It's tender. No bad plants and deep. will have the product. But please remember that the product of our life comes from not our our heart. Our heart itself do not produce anything. Only the seed what the seed. Word of God could give us the fruit of our life. That's the key. The people are trying to change our heart, trying to make our heart good, strong, but our heart never make anything. Only the Word of God. But even the Word of God is good. The Word of God needs a good heart, good soil, good tender soil, good deep tender soil. But once we have the Word of God in a good soil of our heart, it has 160 or 30 times. 130, 60, 100. Or 160, 30 times. Word of God is just the Word of God. Just the word of God. Sounds great. But the word of God doesn't give us happy, happy life. Sometimes give us hard time. Sometimes give us hard to understand. But the word of God will grow in our heart. That's the important part of the story. Number one, Word of God is the only thing to make our fruit. Number two, Word of God grows in our, God, in our heart. See? So we have to keep the Word of God in our heart as long as we could. As long as the Word of God could make, produce production in our heart. Don't throw the Word of God. Don't choke the Word of God. Don't be taken the Word of God by evil. We need, no, no, not we. God needs time to grow the Word of God. So once you hear the Word of God, once you read the Word of God, remember it and live with the Word of God. That's very important, okay? Don't just read and forget. That's number one, man. Eh? Number one soil. How many number one soils do you have? <laughs> I think this story shows our heart, right? Part of our heart is good. Part of our hearts are not good. Part of our heart is so rocky, so hard. Part of our hearts are full of worry, full of deceitfulness of wealth. What part of our hearts are good. So, once you read the Word of God, 
put in a good place and keep it as long as you could. The Word of God will grow in your heart. Grow in your heart. Right? It takes time. I know many people who love the Word of God. Read the Word of God. But, Word of God don't, don't last long. It's so sad. It's so sad. Until the food, the so please uh, be. careful to read the final sentence. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He produces a crop. Who is he? He produces a crop. God. God produces a crop. Of course, this means the Maybe it's seed, but I think it's he, he's a God. So what can I do for ourselves to have a possession in our heart? What can I do? What can we do? We have to learn from the Japanese farmer, right? <laughs> Don't be like the farmer in Israel in the first century. Lord, this is my heart. Yeah, give you a word, God. You know, and just watch what happened in your heart. The only thing we could do is flow. E L O W. Plow or flow. Plow. Plow our heart. I think. Plow our heart. And wait. And receive the word of God. We cannot, our heart would not produce anything. Please remember it. Our heart, our body, our soul could not produce anything. If your life wants to be successful, all your heart and receive the word of God. Only word of God could give you the produce, the production, the fruitfulness of your life. All these young people, some are not so young. We have time to be fruitful. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the story, thanks for the parable Jesus told us today. We heard this story many times. We learned this story many times. But still, we need this story because our heart is not 100% good. Our hearts are still rocky. Our hearts are so many evil things, evil ones, to take to try to take our, the word of God. And also, in our heart, we grow not only the good seed, but also bad seed. Lord, teach me how to plow our heart. Teach me how to change our heart good. Please keep ourselves from evil one. And also, we want to hear your word more. We need your word more. We want to put your good seed, your seed in our heart. Because your seed are good. Your seed are wonderful. 
and your seed a living word of God. Not only our heart, the soil, can make and produce. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for listening. So let's go, Doc.